there's one thing I've waited to harvest, it's the passion fruit. And I see finally they are turning purplish, which means they are mature and ready for harvest. So I don't know which medium you're using to watch this video, but I've received a number of complaints about the sound. So please just let me know in the comments what medium you're using and the quality of the sound. You realize sometimes after growing your vegetables and waiting to harvest but you just don't end up with as much as you expected so today i'll be giving you 10 reasons why your garden is not doing as well as you are expecting and i'm really sorry about the background noise my neighbor is logging so reason one is the recycling of seeds I know many farmers and many gardeners recycle seeds from generation to generation. So like this, which I planted in the last season, is already forming seeds. Which I know most of the time I will harvest and replant in the next season. So just like anything else, seeds also depreciate with time. And you will realize your garden is not doing as well as it did in the previous season. So... That is one thing to watch. Always change your seeds. Don't use your seeds for too many seasons. I think the best you can do is three seasons, then get new seeds. For the squash plants, I know most of us eat both the leaves and the squash itself. So the biggest mistake I made with my squash plant is... Uh, I harvested my pumpkin leaves very early. I wanted to make some vegetable and that really affected the flowering. You all know the leaves are the part of the plant that makes its food. So once you take away the leaves, it cannot produce enough food to sustain the full growth of your squash. So I'm my squash has not produced as much as i expected there are just a few a few pumpkins here i should have had more but you notice even the flowers are not so many it's because i interfered with the whole process and now i won't be harvesting much so for squash plants do not take out the leaves before the squash have formed so these are my cucumbers already producing some flowers and uh, the cucumber is already forming I know we've been told a lot of times you should uh, prune but pruning has to be done correctly and you don't necessarily have to prune your vegetables in fact, I've realized over time that even when I don't prune, I still get more out of my vegetables than when I prune. Though we've been told the opposite. So for things like tomatoes, cucumbers, I just avoid pruning. I still get good fruit from it, even without pruning. So this is another disadvantage of recycling seed. I saved last season seed to use in uh, planting the coriander and you can see how early it has flowered. I've not even had a harvest from it. They still look very young but we're already having flowers meaning it's forming the next seed. So the quality of the seed has depreciated and I think it's just time to get new seeds to plant. So let's talk about weeds. One thing that is interfering with our production is the weeds. So this is one of the most stubborn weeds I've ever experienced in gardening. Keeping your garden clear from weeds is going to help a lot in improving your production. The thing about weeds is that they are competing for nutrients with your vegetables. 
so your vegetable ends up not getting all the nutrients it needs always when you remove the weeds please don't leave them in the garden because they have seeds that fall off when you plant them out and they will eventually regrow so another important thing in gardening is spacing of your vegetables when you plant your vegetables too close to each other they compete for the nutrients available and end up not getting all the nutrients it needs so spacing is very important it helps the plants to feed well receive enough sunlight and to fully develop another big challenge we have in the gardens is pest control so once the vegetables are attacked by pests you will realize they just wilt and wither and you don't get the fruit you're expecting from your garden so like these are examples this is not the size of a tomato this is very tiny and it's because of the pests so there are ways of controlling pests in our gardens there are natural methods to control pests and then there are also organic ways to control pests which keep our vegetables healthy and still does not harm our health the making of uh, plant food requires sunlight so it's always important to have your garden exposed enough to receive at least six hours of sunlight in a day that will give you very healthy plants when there's no rain and when the soil is very dry the plants will not do well so watering is also important watering can be very tiresome sometimes and so if you don't have an irrigation method or an irrigation system in your garden what you can do is mulching mulching is just covering the soil surface to retain moisture so the plants and the soil remains moist another thing to note in gardening is the type of soil you have always check the ph of the soil some soils are very acidic and know your zone so that you know what you can plant and what you cannot grow in that area for instance when you have uh, black cotton soil or when your soil has more of clay most plants will not do well because of the poor drainage so you can supplement that with uh, container gardening or there are also ways to improve the texture of your soil for gardening and lastly i'm going to talk about fertilizing plants need uh, fertilizers to get the nutrients they need to grow and produce fruit so fertilizing your garden periodically is very important just don't overdo it when the garden has a lot of fertilizer your plants will die know the ratio to use for every plant because every vegetable is different and its uh, nutrient requirements are also different so just ensure you have the right ratio of the soil to the fertilizer that you use in your garden so guys that's all i had for you for today i hope uh, we are continuing to learn something each and every day i'll see you in the next bye bye have a beautiful gardening day